Really? Microsoft? Really? Are you kidding me? Oh, lordy! I guess they're serious. They've got a tweet choir here. Looks like they're gonna open their mouths and glorify him. Testify, testify. <laughs> All right, talk to you later. Oh, well, good morning. Uh, it's 8.37, I am freezing. It's 31 degrees outside. Uh, car's been running for a couple minutes and no lights, so that's good. And to address the comments yesterday about the thermostat, I've known that the thermostat has been a recommended, not required, but recommended replace for, well, since August 2010, so more than a year I've known about that, so now I'm acting on it. The only thing that's new that they didn't know about before was the water pump, and that doesn't trigger any lights or anything. But they noticed it when they were in there flushing the engine with that BMW injector cleaner. Because uh, they tried to use the rest function, because that would have told them something I don't know. And um, it didn't work, so they traced that to that. And there it is. Okay, I'm on my way in, and it brought this, the peak reader. I plugged the tool on the engine two minutes ago and pulled code AA, which I looked up to be the secondary air, so that was expected that that would come back after a cold boot, and it did. So, at least anything else hasn't come back. Alright guys, it's 2.15, I'm over here at Chase, I'm going to go in now and, and uh, sign up for a checking and savings account in person. I did it online before they pretty much turned me down, I had to go to the social security office, I don't want to do that, so I let those accounts close. And uh, I'm over here now with all my ID and proof of residence, social security card, birth certificate, passport, everything, driver's license. So I'm gonna go in and open some accounts. And that's how banking should be. It took uh, about 30 minutes to set up both accounts, restore my online access. I put a grand in the savings at this bank. Um, and yeah, the checking account's all good. So now I have um, a card to use in seven to 10 days. And uh, we're all set up. Thank you, Chase. That is one of the ugliest cars this country has ever made, and it is an absolute disgrace. Yet people like it. I will never understand. That CTSV is, I think, the ugliest car this country has ever made. And this country has made a shit ton of bad cars. Well, the weather's still just dicked, but I guess it's all right with me. It's 48 degrees outside right now, and it's been sunny all day. We've lost some more snow, so I guess that's good, maybe. Um, we have 55 inches of snow average a year uh, here in northeastern Ohio. We get the lake effect stuff that comes across Lake Erie, picks it up, brings it over here, and then just dumps usually a couple times a year. And uh, we did get about a foot or a foot and a half that lasted a couple days, and well, obviously most of that is gone. So uh, my dinner is on its way already. I know it's only 4 o'clock, but I'm actually really hungry. I've got a couple things I need to do tonight, so I'd like to get that out of the way sooner. And there goes the metro parks. Behind our house is about a mile to the Ohio Turnpike, maybe a little bit less. And uh, it's a big woods that used to be owned by some family back there. We only own until about as far back as you can see to the creek. Once the creek disappears, our property is not our property anymore. Uh, the metro parks actually bought it, and they're the ones, remember we went on those walks in the fall? Um, so I don't know if they're going to try to make a park out of it. They can't really establish much back there. As you can see, they're, they've been surveying and all kinds of stuff since they bought the land. But, um, yeah, that's good. It, it's going to help our property value because people that might want to move in here know that they're not going to go back and, you know, tear the woods down and make a big shopping center out of it. And they can't because we have something called a hundred year flood. Once every hundred years, that's what they say. It's more like once every 20 years, uh, we get water about 10 feet here from the patio back into the yard, uh, which is really bad. It completely floods everything out. So they can't really do much in the way of infrastructure and paths and park offices because it would get flooded out every 10, 15, 20, 25 years. The last one we had was 2001. Everybody around here got water in their basement. We had an edge. There's a house actually in Kennan's neighborhood. I think it was seven feet of water in their basement. That is right here. I'm about 6'3". I mean, they opened their basement door and it was up to this step, not the first one, it was up to the second step. Can you picture that? The electrical boxes down there, some people have washers, dryers, heaters down there, uh, just destroyed so much and cost so much money. 
uh, for the house. But as far as I know, they fixed it all, but that would not be a good place to build. And then the house that I mow at next door all the time, you know the white one that's out by my garage? Um, there's something called an easement over there. If you don't know, an easement is what a developing neighborhood, when this was developed in the early and mid-1980s, they left uh, maybe 50 feet wide and all the way back to the end of the property that the allotment here bought. Um, they left that open if they ever wanted to put a road back there, but as I said, they can't. Uh, but I've been mowing that easement, now the Metro Parks has it, I don't know if I will be continuing to mow that. I kind of hope I do, because I like the same money, and it's just a big open grass, you know, it doesn't take much to mow. So I like these kind of weeks that I've been going through here. The weather's up and down, um, I've been in and out of the car place, I don't mind doing that, I like to have something to do. And I won't have to drop the car off there for any more extended periods of time. In fact, it shouldn't even be a day, I think I'm just going to go in, wait the two hours while they put in the water pump. If it needs a thermostat, I'll wait the three hours it needs for the thermostat install. And the way that's installed, I think I talked about it this morning, that's why I'm not doing a lot of these things myself. It's a pain in the ass to do. You have to drain the coolant, you have to take the coolant intake, all the pipes and stuff, all the hoses, not pipes, the hoses have to come off. Yeah, I could do it, and yeah, I could save some money, but I'm paying for quality service uh, by a trained professional who knows what they're doing, who would potentially stand behind their work if something severe were to happen. So I'm not complaining about the money, it's just, uh, it is a lot but you get what you pay for. So as you saw, the check engine light came back on this morning. I stopped, I told you on the way into the building this morning that it was the same code AA, which is, they, they are getting um, airflow through the secondary air, which is all emissions, um, but it's just not enough. And they did the best they could, and I understand that. It's not worth eight grand to pull the engine. Uh, so I checked again after school, no more faults returned, so I reset the light, the light's out. It'll be off until another cold start, which will probably be tomorrow morning. The engine stays warm for a very long time. Um, so yeah, that's annoying, but if I ever just don't want to look at the light, then I'll reset it and it'll be good for about 24 hours or so. So in the beginning of this vlog this morning, you saw the content from what I shot last night, I think it was before midnight, of uh, Microsoft's keynote at CES 2012 in Las Vegas. And most of you probably know what CES is, it's the Consumer Electronics Show. Only Microsoft would have gospel singers, and I understand they want to give something for people to talk about, and they definitely did that. But the way Apple puts on a keynote and the way Microsoft puts on a keynote is very different. So when's the next Apple keynote? Don't they usually have something in January? Um, I think it's software development or something in January. Um, so we'll keep an eye out for that. And I got an email. Those of you who used um, my account to register your UDIDs on your iOS devices, my account is expiring in two weeks. Uh, I think there's three or four of you out there who I let use my account. You sent me your UDIDs for your devices. I registered them so you could use beta software on it. My account expires in two weeks. So if you're using my account, please get off the beta. Um, I'm not renewing the account. My, my experiences with the beta program were so terrible, I'm not even gonna bother renewing it to use iOS 6. It won't work, it'll be completely buggy, and I'll just spend half of my summer with a screwed up iPhone. So for me, it's not worth it, and I apologize if you're using the account, but you are gonna have to go back to uh, stock software for a while, unless you can find somebody else to register your UDIDs. Got a package here the other day from Nutrent Technologies. If you remember, it's that company that I've been reviewing stuff for. I did the, the iPad 2 case and we did a review uh, and a giveaway of that. So now I have two more things in here that I'm gonna be doing an unboxing on for the channel today. That'll be up today on Tuesday. Sometime I haven't shot it yet. I actually don't have my tripod. Kenan has it, I need to go get it back. Um, so that's going to be up. I'll probably have a review up Wednesday or Thursday. I don't know what we're doing with giveaways with this. I don't know if uh, I'm going to be doing that. But stay tuned to the, check, the tech channel. Link below. It's Ryan Knows Tech on YouTube uh, for the information on that. But it's all iOS, iPod, iPhone, iPad products. Okay, so free again. Uh, we're over here at Panera. All right, how you doing? Good. Good. I'm good. Good. We're gonna, I'm just gonna get myself some hot chocolate. Have you eaten or are you getting dinner or what? I've ate. It's you, all you've good. ate? You, you've eaten? I've eaten whatever you you've want. You've eaten? It's like, English. like the garden, Taylor. The garden of Eaton. Right? Or Egan. Taylor's closing stuff to save Ram, but the good news is he's not gonna need to do that in about two hours. You wanna tell him why? 16 gigs, baby. Oh, friggin' right. 16 gigs. Yeah. Taylor's stopping over here to catch up on his bank, right? Yeah. Friggin' right. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Taylor, you, uh, you should have pulled a little closer so you don't have to pull uh, Sparky the dog and just wail your whole head out the window. Oh, for frig's sake! 
Oh yeah! All right, we're beginning the uh, surgical process. Taylor, let's see if you know which three screws are longer than the other ones. Very good. The top right three. Good work, Taylor. This is something I haven't seen done ever. Taking the RAM out of computer while it's sleeping. <laughs> you just kill it. It's not going to wake up again. It might. It's like the hibernate. Pet. No. I actually, I no. know. I'll bet you it'll work. You bet it'll wake up. Really? I think so. Okay, I'll take you up on that. I'll bet you these screws that it won't. <laughs> I think it will. There you go, Taylor. There's 16. So now, latch it back up, and we'll see if it resumes from sleep. Okay, new RAM is in. Let's see if it actually resumes from sleep. It won't. You have to start it up okay. first. Okay, let's watch. see. I think it's going to do a cold boot, Taylor. I could be wrong. Or I could be right. <laughs> <laughs> it was about to, then like, oh, no, yeah, let's not do and, that. Yeah, and then it realized that, oh, oh, it's not in the RAM anymore. You just saw it was just about to do it. And, it... and then it didn't. Yep, it's that time of the week. Time to reboot the Mac. I usually let it go a couple days, and then I reboot it, and then stuff's faster. Anyways, it's 11 o'clock exactly right now. Uh, Kenan and Taylor came over for a little bit. As you saw, we got the 16 gigs of RAM in his machine. So now I have 8 gigs DDR3. I was going to give it to Michael. His machine requires 1066 megahertz RAM, which means it would underclock to my 1333 would underclock to 1066. And from what I've read, he would lose dual channel function, which isn't even worth it. So he's going to be better off to go and just buy the old style 8 gig 1066. It's not even that expensive. So if anybody wants 8 gigs of 1333, it's Apple RAM, which is made by Hynix, but it's what Apple sells. It's very fast. It's great RAM, best that I've seen. Um, PM me, DM me, find me, contact me, um, 20, 30 bucks, you name a price, and I'll ship it to you. Anyways, that's going to end this vlog. I did some calculations when they were here, exactly how much I have in the M5, in the car and it's $28,619. That is already including a thermostat should I need it and the water pump that I have ordered and ready for install Thursday. And it's not worth $28,000. It's worth maybe 25 dollars right now. Um, and the prices have dropped and fluctuated and some have risen. Uh, you can go buy a E39 M5 for $40,000 if you want to. It'll be an 03 with 50,000 miles or less on it. And mine's a 2000 with 157 and a half thousand miles. But um, essentially, after I get this water pump in and probably a thermostat, it will be about as perfect as I can get it in the way it runs. The tech drove it at BMW. He said it runs like a top. It really hasn't lost compression. Uh, he said it feels very good. It's still a very powerful car, and it should be for many years. It just needs, it's going to need some good taking care of over the next couple years. And I think I'm the right person to do it. I care a lot about the car, as you know, and I put a lot of money into it, and I hope to have it for a long time. Uh, so please understand that. But anyways, that's it for today. I don't want to make this too long. I already have. And tomorrow's Wednesday, and I'll talk to you in the morning. Good night.